Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing trip, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. From the bank, ranging far offshore, spotted bass are drawn to isolated hard structure, providing there's the presence of an accessible food source. Brush, stumps, rocks, timber, and other assorted debris all have the potential to harbor a school of chunky spots. And no matter what object, no matter what depth, if spotted bass are present, odds are, you can catch them on a jig head worm. I love catching spotted bass. It's early December, and Kim and his guest, local tournament angler Todd Goad, race toward a familiar line of Lake Kiowee's floating boat docks. Now that's a, a tree that lays off the... Mm -hmm. And you can't even see it from the bank. It just starts right there and hangs out over 40 foot of water. It's a perfect spot. Just come over the stuff right there. You should have bit it. Got him. There you go. That's hey, a good one too, that's Kim. That's a good one, <laughs> right? Good going. That'll start us off. Yes, sir. Looks like he's got on. a little weight to him. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty good one there. That pretty good to me. In the basket. Good way to start it off. And you brought some more line in. I did. <laughs> Someone else was in there. Before you, it didn't do so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that fish came off, you know, there was a log there in front of that dock and, uh, you know, knowing where to make that precise oh, cast. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, oh, what a log. It always helps. It, it always helps. And, and somebody had tried to catch one there before because yeah, I've got, got fishing got line around my bait. <laughs> so uh, we'll get that out of the water too. All right. Well, we got started, got on the board. There you go. Nice Kiwi spotted bass. There's actually some good cover between these two docks, so you, you do stand a good chance to catch one. <laughs> Got him. Good yeah, one, Cam? Like, yeah, it feels like, ooh, that is a good one. All right. That is a good one. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. That rod's shaking like a head <laughs> shaker. <laughs> look at it, look at it. That is a nice spot. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Good fish. Yes. All right. Right in the top lip. Very nice. Now see, he was not a dock at all. He was in between, just yeah. on the break. There you go. Nice chunk. Good fish. Nice chunk. That's what we Love come it. up here for. Love it. Right in the nostril. Right in nice nostril. Perfect hook set. Good job. As the day warms up, it ought to get better and better. I, I think, think so. That. Absolutely. Ready. Thank you, Spotted Bass. Love catching you things. A good percentage of the Spotted Bass school up and move deeper this time of year, primarily following balls of shad. However, a portion remains shallow. But what's the attraction? What are these fish feeding on? If you were paying attention as Kim fought that last fish to the boat, you likely noticed that the struggling spotted bass coughed up a telltale sign. Young of the year bluegill, which confirms that even in lakes that support a shad population, the bass are drawn to and feed on bluegills as well. A better understanding of Lake Kiwi's boat docks 
is coming up next. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Seagar, trust Seagar when everything is on the line. Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Aquaview, reinventing underwater cameras. Deep Blue Coffee, dive in. And by Indian River Michigan Tourist Bureau. Pure water, pure trails, pure north. That's the thing about fishing boat docks. You know, when you have a partner, you can you can dissect a boat dock. Mm -hmm. One of you kind of throw on the back corner and one throw on the front. and You can dissect one pretty, pretty quick. quick yeah. Most of these docks have brush around them. They do, and you know, they've been here. These are old established docks, so you know, they've thrown lawn chairs right. out and There's trash. And anything that's blown off the dock. Exactly, you name it. It's, uh, there's a lot of, lot of habitat for fish to be under there. Yeah. You know, it's those kind of irregular features that, you know, attract bass to those kind of things. Spotted bass are notorious to live on that kind of structure. Something about these older docks, too, you can tell by looking at one, normally it's got a fish on it. They've been there a long time, they're established. Seem to catch a lot more fish off this kind of dock than, than a brand new one. I was gonna say, that that's traveling to the left. Yes. If it, you didn't see that. <laughs> well, I thought I was coming over something, and, uh, and, and, and yeah, it feels like a decent one. And then the coming over something said, hey, I'm down here. <laughs> I saw it going to the left, I'm going, wait a minute. It said, hey, hello. <laughs> Yeah, that's a nice one. Oh, that's a nice one. That's yeah, nice one look there. at there. Look at it in the water. Look at that clear water. Man. That's what you come to Kiwi to catch right there. That's nice. Nice. Ooh, yes. Right there. There's a dandy. Good one, Todd. Thank you. Ooh -wee. Awesome. Awesome fish. Beautiful spotted bass. Green pumpkin, fat baby finesse. Green pumpkin. Very nice. All right. Do you typically find that the biggest one that's down there bites first or not necessarily? Usually it is, yeah. Throw it, stay right here. Throw at that canoe and drag it all the way back to the boat. You're gonna come through that lay down. Perfect. Thank you. You know, I don't think you could make casts like that with just regular fluorocarbon. If you have braid with that leader, mm -hmm. it really, you can make a lot longer cast that comes off the spool a lot better. Got him. <clears throat> that feels like a better fish. Good deal. That feels like a good head shaker. Yes. Ooh, look, he's coming up, coming up. Ooh, that's another oh, decent fish. That's a fish. good fish, yes, sir. <laughs> good job. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, that's a chunk there. Nice chunk. Not a giant, giant, but for spots, that's a nice. I just love the... Look at the girth on them I right know. there. I just love how they get that little baseball on their stomach. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful spot. Uh, Look at the yeah, girth on it. that fish. Yeah, no kidding. Like a football. I love catching spotted bass. No question. Everybody knows I love to fish for smallmouth, but spots are like between smallmouth and largemouth. Yeah. They do. They, Some and of the they, characteristics are the same. Right. And they fight like crazy. I love it. I love it. Love it. Thank you. That's the thing about fall fishing with the water 60 degrees still. You're going to have fish shallow. You're going to have them everywhere. Mid depths. Right. You're going to have fish out deep too. So. There was no question the fish were scattered, but that's to be expected this time of year. 
we caught largemouth cruising the shallows in chunky spots anywhere from the bank to 35 feet plus. Others had been catching them on spoons as deep as 60 feet. Grab your mask and fins. We're going for a swim. Right after these messages. You'll feel a lot of stuff with that one. That's one of those docks where a lot of trash has gotten the water over uh -huh. the years. That's real quick. I want to I look at that. There's a boat or something. Look at it. Look at. It. Oh wow. Is that or is is that a boat or is that an old dock? Well, there's a fish. There's a fish. There is a fish. How about that? <laughs> Stop, no, there he is. Yeah, there he Stop is. Stop spinning. Stop spinning. There, there he is. is. Look at that fish. Two fish. Look at them. Look at them. Three fish. Three. Look at that. Look at them fish around there. Look at them big old spotted bass. <laughs> wow. There's Look, another that, one coming in there. There's four. That's a giant right there. I mean, we just came across it and we could see there was something big down there. Yeah. See, I'm coming off it now. Let me pull this off. What is that right there? I mean, that that's more than... <laughs> It's either a dock or, or a barge or Looks something. Looks like a sunken boat. I might, might have to investigate that. That is a boat. We were intrigued by what we saw and thought this might be an interesting place to dive. So with cameras in hand, Danny and I decided to investigate the structure more thoroughly. Danny, are you with me? I am with you, Dad. I'm down at the stern of the boat right now. I'm up here with two spots. I got a few spots here. Just swimming all over this. Oh, cool. I'll head back up your way. There's a couple of good ones, but most of them are what we expect. This large piece of structure was indeed a sunken boat, but more like a work barge of some type, with railings and what appeared to be a winch stand on the bow. I'm guessing this vessel may have been used to install boat docks. However, now, from a fisherman's standpoint, it rests on the bottom at a depth of 20 feet at the bow and to nearly 30 feet at the stern, providing ideal habitat for Lake Kiowee spotted bass. Spots display a distinct magnetism to hard structure. Whether large objects or small, spotted bass will seek out and hold on these irregular features. They're over here next to a ladder that's under the water. Man, there's a whole bunch of trash down here. I'm trying to go nice and slow, but we got a whole swarm of spots right here. I think I expected these fish are down there at the bottom. No, no, they're not up under that shadow canopy. They're down on the bottom. Another significant observation was that as we explored the submerged trees around the docks, we substantiated our earlier thoughts as to the presence of young of the year bluegill. Schools of the vulnerable bait fish flittered throughout the branches, presenting an available and abundant food source for the resident spotted bass. Makes you fish a dock more thoroughly after you see them on the aqua yeah, view, doesn't yeah. it? Look at you going in for the kill now you after know, they run know, the camera. I, I know where exactly you what's know. there, how they hold on it. Pretty cool. Well, let's catch another fish off. Let's do that. Well, that's right there where you hooked that big one earlier too, just a little bit to the left yep, of it. Yep. Yep. Are you getting him? Awesome. <laughs> I hope it's one of those big ones. He doesn't feel like a big one. He doesn't? Nope. Oh. But he's one of them. He's one of them. How awesome is that to see him on the camera <laughs> and then throw over there and catch exactly. him? Exactly. Exactly. But I want one of the good ones. Getting. We have so many tools 
at our disposal now fishing, it's almost like cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said that. At the end of the day though, you still gotta make the right cast, you That's still right. gotta catch them. And they're all tools to help you. Probably seen underwater doing the footage like, you know, you just barely move that jig head worm and it goes quite a, a ways. A long ways. Yeah, and you know, you see people overworking their lures a lot of times. Yep. And uh, you just barely have to crawl that thing. Got him. Good job. I get the net. Decent little fish. Not decent fish. Look at Look that. him spitting up bait right there. Yep. There's lots of that size, aren't there? There are a lot of that size, but they grow up to be the ones like you caught. He's hungry, he's been eating too. We'll turn him back and get another one. We'll return to Lake Kiwi's boat docks right after these messages. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, introducing the all new Evan Rood e -Tech G2. Cush it, world's most comfortable rod butt. Sims Fishing Products, the choice of professional guides and anglers worldwide. And by Sportfish Michigan, your source for the top charter captains and guides. I like how you, your E-Tech for this year has the red panels. That's that's a pretty cool looking engine. It matches your boat perfect. It does, it does. I mean, if you look at the red in the seats and the gray in the seats, it looks just like the engine. It, it was custom made for yeah. it. That's the cool thing about it. There's like, I think there's like 400 different combinations that you can get. There's a lot of features of that engine that are just phenomenal. You know, it's five years and 500 hours, no maintenance. I mean, that's that's stout. Yeah, that's a strong statement. You know, that engine was totally redesigned from the bottom up. I think there's only seven parts on that engine that is on the other e -tech. Right. It makes you wonder sometimes if they're suspended just right under the floats and they follow your worm all the way down or if they're on the bottom when it gets there? Okay. Typically when we find spots under docks, they're more on the bottom. And something we've noticed at Lake Lanier is the big largemouth that you catch every now and then. Mm -hmm. We've seen them hanging right under the floats. How about that? You know how you can throw a bait alongside the, reel it back and they just come out under the floats? Mm -hmm. But most of the spots, they're down on that cover, those lawn chairs and all the other trash that are in front of the docks. That's the neat thing about this show is you see so many different types of situations with your, with your underwater footage that it helps a, a fisherman like myself learn, you know, you learn stuff from every show and, and you can apply it in, you know, when you get in that situation. Yeah, I mean, that's a, our whole intent. I remember one of the first first seasons that you did the all those crawfish on that log was just incredible to see and how the smallmouth were hanging around around <laughs> those that was incredible I mean there had to have been a hundred rusty crayfish hanging in that log corralled I mean th they were so afraid to come out of that <laughs> log because they were being circled by 20 to 40 three to four pound smallmouths that dock's been known to have a big large mouth around it from time to time. Got him. A good one? Yeah. It's just like oh yeah, he's about to jump. That is a Ooh, nice that is one. A nice one. Nice one. <laughs> nice fish there, Kim. Look at there. Man, look at it. Somebody's look, coming up. Look at that one with him. Right look at that one him. with him. Yep. Three. There's three. You called the whole school out. <laughs> oh, good fish. That's a nice one. Come on. That's a large mouth too. Got him. Oh, it is a large mouth and a nice one. Good job. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, but there was two or three. They had some there. compadres with him. 
no doubt. Man, I got him right in the nose good. He wouldn't go in no place. That's the fat baby finesse worm. It's, it, it's got just a little bigger profile than a regular finesse worm. Same size. It, it does. Five inch. It's soft too. No, it sure is. That's the perfect plastics. Nice, fat, large mouth. Awesome. Good job. Awesome. You called the whole school yep. out from under the dock there. There was several with him. <laughs> there was. <laughs> there was. But uh, nice, chunky, large mouth. Yeah, nice large mouth. Alrighty. Well, thank you. Let's catch some more of those. That's a good thing about dock fishing. When you get it in the right spot, if you don't get a bite and, you know, three or four pulls, reel it in and go yeah. on. You can cover a lot of water quick doing that. Accommodations provided by Quality in Seneca, South Carolina. Clean, comfortable, and conveniently located just 10 miles from Lake Kiowee. A big thanks to our friend Todd Goad for his southern hospitality and for sharing his knowledge of Lake Kiowee. Our next episode is pretty awesome. I put Seaguar's new flippin' braid to an ultimate test while hoisting big Florida pigs out of the reeds and water lettuce. It's an exciting show you won't want to miss. So be there next week on Hook and Look. Look is a Kim Stricker production.